average rate of reaction can be calculated over different time intervals for chemical reactions. We use graphs to represent information from our experiments and we are often asked the following. 1. To calculate the average rate of reaction or 2. To calculate the total volume of gas being produced and the end point of the reaction. So let's do an example of calculating the average rate of reaction using a graph. The graph below gives information on the volume of nitrogen gas produced by the gas generator. Calculate the average rate of reaction between 0 and 10 microseconds. First thing that we're going to do is write out our formula. Average rate is equal to change in quantity over change in time. We're then going to substitute. In the question, we're given 0 and 10 microseconds. We always take small numbers away from big numbers, so we would write 10 minus 0. What we're then going to do is we're going to look at the graph to see where time is, which is along the x-axis, and we're going to put a box around 0 and a box around 10. So what we do now is we draw a line from the x-axis at 0 and 10 till we meet the point plotted in the curve of the graph. At time 0, we have got 0 volume of gas produced, and at time 10, we have got, when we extrapolate along to the y-axis, 32 litres. We then finish our substitution, small numbers take uh, away from big numbers, 32 minus 0, and that gets us one mark. When we put that into our calculator, that changes to 32 divided by 10, which gives us 3.2. And for our units along the axis, they will give us our units in brackets. Uh, for quantity, we have litres and time we have microseconds, so we rewrite that as litres microseconds to the minus one. So we're going to be using the same graph, but this time we're going to be looking at the average rate of reaction between 20 and 30 microseconds. If you want to pause the video and have a go, eh, once you're finished, you can resume the video and we'll go through the answer together. First thing we want to do is the formula, so we're going to have to write average rate is equal to change in quantity over change in time. The time we've been given, so we do big numbers to take away small numbers, so we write 30 minus 20. And we put a box, of a box for those on the x-axis at 20 and 30 microseconds. We then draw a line from the x-axis until we meet the curve. And we extrapolate these along to the y-axis. We then have a look at the volumes produced. Now each little box is worth one litre. So we have 41 and 44. So we finish our substitution and write 44 minus 41 because we always take small numbers away from big numbers. When we pop that into our calculator, that gives us 3 over 10, which is 3 divided by 10, which gives us 0 0.3. And again, our units, our quantity, which is on the y-axis, is in litres. Our time, which is on the x-axis, is in microseconds. So we can rewrite that as litres microseconds to the minus 1. The next thing that past papers might ask you to do is to work out the total of volume of gas which is produced and to identify the end point of the reaction. So to work out the total volume, what you want to do is you want to draw a straight line using your ruler from the end of the curve which is plotted on the graph um, to the y-axis. You then have to identify the volume using the y-axis scale. We can see between the numbers given on the y-axis there are five boxes and there's a difference of 10 between the numbers given, so that means each box is worth 2 centimetres cubed. So the total volume of gas being produced in this reaction is 82 centimetres cubed. Once you've worked this out, you are able to work out the end point of the reaction. We want to read the graph backwards. We're going to work from the end to the start. What we can see from the line that we've produced to work out the total volume is we've got a straight line. We want to see the first point in which the graph starts to dip and we draw a line from there down to the x-axis. Again, we're going to use the x-axis scale to work out. There's still five boxes between each of the values given on the x-axis, which means each box is worth two. And that allows me to say that the end point of this reaction is 58 seconds. This past paper question is from the Intermediate 2, 2013, written 3B. 
A student carried out the experiment, the graph of the results were plotted. Calculate the average rate of reaction for the first 40 seconds. First thing we want to do is we want to write out the formula. Average rate is equal to change in quantity over change in time. We then substitute. We're given the first 40 seconds, so we do 40 minus 0 on the bottom. And then we have to put a box around 40 and 0 on the x-axis of the graph being provided. We then draw a line from the x-axis to the curve which is plotted on the graph and we extrapolate that along to the y-axis and use our scale to work out what these values are. If we were to finish that substitution, we would have 72 minus 0 on the top line. When we calculate that, that gives us 72 divided by 40. And when I pop that in the calculator, I get 1.8. To calculate out our units, we want to look at our quantity units, which is on our y-axis. In this case, it's given as centimetres cubed. Along our y-axis, we have seconds. So we can rewrite that as centimetres cubed second to the minus 1. This past paper question is from the National 5, 2018, written 5D. The graph below gives information on the volume of nitrogen gas produced by the gas generator. State the total volume in litres of nitrogen gas being produced. So what we do is we start at the end of the curve. We want to draw a straight line from the last point which has been plotted. We extrapolate that along to the y-axis and what we can see is that there are 10 little boxes between the 40 and 50 which means each box represents one and four boxes above 40 which means I have 44 litres which has been produced.